It's my absolute pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker for this year's conference, Larry Doyle. And just this morning, I, I learned that Larry in the late 80s used to run a comic book shop, which perfect segue into my introductory notes, because if Larry Doyle were a superhero, he would be the procrastinator. <laughs> Surfer of sights, layer of couches, the layer of do, daring or otherwise. Um, I'm, of course, referring to Larry's post on the Sun's Reed Street blog, if you noticed it this week, where uh, he revealed that while it appeared that uh, he had not started to write or even think about his comments for this morning, that that was really part of the process. <laughs> so rest assured, dear citizen, that inspiration abounds. Um, at the very least, uh, Larry wrote in this post that uh, he could riff on the physical appearance of the person introducing him. Um, uh, alas, I do not have $150,000 at my disposal to spit up my wardrobe. Um, and that's the only political thing I'll say today. Um, they, they say a man is only as good as his word, but what if that word is don't? <laughs> you may recognize that exclamation as Homer Simpson's trademark grunt. Larry was indeed a supervising producer and writer uh, on The Simpsons from 1997 to 2001. And he wrote several episodes for that highbrow cartoon, Beavis and Butthead, for MTV. He has been a columnist for Esquire, uh, an editor of National Lampoon, and he regularly contributes to The New Yorker. His first novel, I Love You, Beth Cooper, uh, is available in hard, hardback, paperback, and even in Uber Geek Kindle version. And uh, the story deals with uh, a nerdy valedictorian, Dennis Cooperman, who uh, proclaims his love for Beth Cooper during his graduation speech. Then uh, the events unfold over the course of that night from his graduation party on. Beth shows up at this party at Dennis's pretty lame party. Uh, she has a couple pretty girlfriends in tow, and her uh, man as hell boyfriend is not too far behind. And as they say, wacky hijinks ensue. Uh, if you think I Love You, Beth Cooper reads like a movie, you're right. And the theatrical release is scheduled for July of next year. Um, sorry, the, these two uh, writers we're talking about, who's, who's playing Beth Cooper? Uh, Katie. 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 That's great. I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she's going to be fabulous in the movie version, I'm sure. Um, but what I think is even cooler than the movie and the book and even the Kindle version is that Larry Doyle received the 2008 Thurber Prize for American Humor and just uh, a few weeks ago was in New York beating out a Saturday Night Live writer and the former president of the Harvard Lampoon, uh, both of whom I think are voices. So good job. <laughs> <laughs> Please join me in welcoming our keynote speaker for this year's conference, Larry Doyle. Do this tonight. She sighs. She's a 
she's from Tour Pro and had heard this before from DeLillo, from the chicks with legs. So you've got 20,000 people out there. Some of them paid scalpers literally $300 to hear you come read. <laughs> Not to mention what they spent on the t-shirts, the reading CDs, the giant foam bookmarks. They're not even laughing at the jokes anymore, I say. They're laughing at the punctuation. <laughs> Your punctuation is funny. So many people, such long names. You're lucky it's not a memoir album, but they tear you apart. Poor choice of words, I think, considering this very stadium held last week in James Fry, somewhat ironically for his only 87 little pieces. <laughs> reading, 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 the crowd chants. I hoist out what I used to call my writing hand. It, it's dead, I pronounce. <laughs> Marty, Alpha says. Dr. Marty, the tour physician, shuffled over. Sam's like loaded boy, paw. Boy's right, he says. The thing's about to fall off. Mm -hmm. I wanted your medical opinion. I would have asked for it, Hal. The good doctor nods and reaches into his bag, removing his fixing. He pops the syringe into a vial, pulls back the plunger, and slowly throws a potent cocktail of vitamin D, morphine, and Major League Baseball grade steroids. Mm -hmm. Taps my wrist twice and punches the needle in. I don't This got updated to the couple's tour, Dr. Murray said. Mm -hmm. I think it's bad now. Back then, they not only bought the books, they read them. <laughs> Outside, the crowd has gone into an undulated roar. They're doing the wave, apparently. <laughs> we better get in there, Allison says. We don't want another San Antonio, uh, the Da Vinci tour. Dan Brown's flight was delayed. Before he could be helicopter in, eight people were dead, proposed realistically. <laughs> <laughs> As I climbed into the golf cart, I noticed something on CNN. Angry people. We're all pulling my book into the fire. I could tell because of the distinctive couple. I had said a stupid thing. The reporter showed me one of those full page ads my publisher had taken out in newspapers throughout the country, quoting a blogger calling my novel the greatest book ever written. Surely, the reporter asked, I didn't think my book was better than the Bible. It's funnier than the Bible. <laughs> and I believe that. The Bible isn't funny at all, except in a broad conceptual way. <laughs> but I shouldn't have said it. There were bonfires going in 26 cities, Wolf Blister said, and a couple on cruise ships. I stared at the screen. My words I thought on fire. My lovely books, thousands of them, turned to ash. And they didn't even get a volume discount. I smiled broadly as the car came out of the tunnel into what was once center field. The crowd roared and squealed in equal measure. They had come for the word, and I was going to read it to them. So that's pretty much how a book tour goes. <laughs>